Hello again. As I have made clear on one or two previous videos, the German word Tutzwang, spelt Zugzwang, which means in English compulsion to move, and where a player is compelled to move, he loses. If he could forego moving, he'd be safe. I recently came across an interesting article by some Russians online called Nalimov Table Bases, and it's concerning endgame positions, and Tutzvong is one on which it touches and gives a very thorough rundown on the principles underlying this word and how it operates in practice. So let me just read out exactly the English translation of that article. It's queen versus rook, as you can see in the position in front of you here. The queen is a much stronger piece than the rook. Therefore, the struggle of the king and queen against the king and rook usually develops in favour of a stronger piece. The game plan is to place the stronger piece near the king and rook and force them to separate. Then either the rook, deprived of support by its king, is won, or the king, deprived of support by the rook, is checkmated. How the rook can be forced to leave the king, this is the question. A technique with which many are already familiar creating a tutzvong position in which the move will be disadvantageous for the weaker side. The position in front of us is a tutzvong characteristic of this type of endgame. So the black pieces still defending each other quite well, but here's the problem. Black has to make a move. Like I was just saying before, he's compelled to move. It is Black's move. If he could forego moving, he'd be safe. He can't move the king to a6 because of queen c8. Just to demonstrate here, if you did move the king to a6, then you'd pin the rook and you'd win it next move. So that would be no good to Black. If rook b8, then queen a5. And that's checkmate. So either way, pretty speedy losses. But it's a speedy loss no matter what black does here. However, the rook has a lot of choice. The squares b4, b3, b2, b1, as well as f7, g7 and h7. Is it really impossible to move any of these squares? Let's check. Let's try rook b4. That's followed by queen a5 check. Or queen e7 check. In either case, it picks up the rook. So rook b4 is definitely out. The same thing happens in response to rook b2. Or rook g7. After queen d4. Check. Picks up the rook on g7 or on b2. So b2 and g7 are also out. Thus, instead of seven squares, only four retreats remain on b3, b1, f7, h7. Let's try rook b3. So that's followed by queen d4, check. King b8, not king a8 to there, because he'd play queen a4 check and pick up the rook again. So he has to go to b8. He can't go anywhere else. And then there's queen f4 check. 
and black has a difficult choice. Again, if he moves on to the A-line, it's Queen A4 picking it up, so he has to go to C8. And then Queen F8 is checkmate. So that's no good at all. So just to go back to the original position again. What about rook f7? What happens then? Well, that's followed by queen d4, check. This seems to be a regular feature in this. And then king b8. We'll come to king a8 in just a moment, this transposition of moves in play here. Then queen b2 check. He plays king a8 because if he were to play king c8, then you can go down here and he has to interpose and then it's mate. This is the problem when the kings are in opposition, black is instantly checkmated. So he has no option but to go to a8 and that's what would have happened had he played king a8 instead of king b8 just a moment ago. Then comes queen a2 and picks up the rook. So that's no good. That's rook f7. So what about rook to b1? We have queen d4 check again. King to b8. Queen h8 check. King to a7, no option. Queen h7, check, picking up the rook. This, this is a familiar theme where you win the rook one way or another. And there was no way out of this. This is, this is why it is indeed a, an absolute tutzvong here. Black is lost. And finally, on rook h7, because we've already covered b4, b3, b2, b1, and f7 and g7. I believe I'm correct in saying. So let's have a look at rook h7. There's queen d4 check again. King b8. Queen e5 check. King a7, queen a1 check. Now you see black is falling into the, the check and winning the rook again because the only move that he has at this point is to play king onto the b-line and then queen b1 check and wins the rook. I think we've covered all those variations. Just let me make absolutely sure of that. Just give me a moment. Yeah, it's it's all covered. So that's that's that. So as can be seen from this, no matter what black plays, when it's black to play a move, he loses. If he could forego moving, he'd be safe. Now this this is to be regarded as part one in this Tutsvong exercise. I'll present to you part two in due course where black can forego moving and we'll see what happens with white.
But what I can tell you is that White does not have an easy time of it. Hope you enjoyed this, and goodbye for now.